You feel like you've hit a wall with your fasting journey, with your mucus-free eating journey, or your raw food journey, or your vegan journey, or whatever kind of health journey you're on. You've made some progress, but you haven't gone all the way. You know that there is more healing to be done. Then this video's for you. We're gonna show you something that maybe you haven't thought about. There's a little area of the mucus diet healing system that a lot of people either ignore, or they don't know about it, they don't think about it. So we're gonna be giving you one of those recipes today, Monica, Hannah and Mia are going to help me out showing you an incredible recipe that can absolutely transform your health journey, transform your practice of the mucus diet healing system. If you're a raw foodist, but you found you've hit a wall, gosh darn it, I give up. There might be a couple cooked items on here or something. Part of your transition, you can read mucus diet healing system. We're gonna get all into all of that today. Stay tuned. I am Professor Spear. I've practiced something called the mucusless diet healing system for over 21 years, and I've helped thousands of people transform their lives using the simple and natural methods of this great system. And today we are going to show you an incredible recipe on how to make vegetable broth. And vegetable broth is one of the tools, one of the items that Professor Arnold Eret advocates that we use under cir certain circumstances to help us in our transition. So I'm going to read a couple excerpts of Professor Arnold Eret talking about broth. So really quickly, I want to invite you to my free training. Go down below right now, click the link, enroll in my free training. It's only going to be up for a limited time. And in this training, I'm able to get into things that I can't get into here on YouTube. But when it's time to really talk some really serious discussions, I, we got to do that other places. So go down below right now, click the link, join my free training, you're gonna love it. All right, so this is lesson 15, transition diet in the mucusless diet healing system. And Eric says, never drink during a meal. If accustomed to a beverage with your meal, wait a short while after you have eaten before drinking. Soups should be avoided with meals as the more liquid taken, the more difficult for proper digestion. If a warm drink is desired, for instance, as a breakfast drink during the winter time, make a broth by cooking for a long time different kinds of vegetables, such as spinach, onions, carrots, cabbage, etc., and drink the juice only. And in note 66 in the annotated version, I add that it can be very helpful to use vegetable broth to extend a liquid fast. However, be mindful to not lose control and eat the cooked vegetables used to make the broth. Overcooked vegetables would not be the best foods with which to break any kind of fast. So here's an excerpt from rational fasting. Operative word, see that word? That says rational rational fasting. There's a section called fasting drinks and Eric says, as a change, vegetable juice made from cooked starchless vegetables is very good during a longer fast. So there you go. Vegetable broth can be an excellent tool to use. Let's turn it over to Monica, Hannah, and Mia to show you an incredible broth recipe. Take it away. Hello. Welcome, this is Monica, Mia, and Hannah. And today we are gonna be showing you how to make broth for your transition. Broth is something that is amazing, especially when it gets a little chilly. Yeah, um, I love it when it's cold outside. I love it when it might be transitioning through things and you just wanna drink something. Instead of eat something? Yes. All right, sounds good, especially at night, right? When yeah. you don't wanna eat too late, but something's happening and it wants to eat something. So you have a little broth and it kind of helps you through that. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna show you a simple recipe that is my go-to. I make broth right now, we're in winter. Fortunately, I'm in California, so at the moment the sun is shining. So we decided to do this video outside. We pick some herbs, the girls pick some herbs from the garden here that we're gonna go ahead and add to the broth. 
They're always fun. If you have any fresh herbs available or whatever's on sale at the grocery store is what I like to do. I also add things that I've saved throughout the week that I would have normally just tossed in the compost, but is still good for broth. Okay, so let's get started. I usually like to start with a base of three items. Celery, carrots, and onions. Those are my base. Other than that, whatever else I sprinkle is either because it's in season and growing or it was at a discount at the grocery store. So those are turnips. They're actually the radishes. Just kidding. You can take a few of those. Chopping my Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna cut up. These are my scraps from the kitchen. They might already be cut up. You'll notice this is the bottom of a cauliflower. These are some onion peels. This is that. Beautiful. I'm gonna put it in the pot. Yes, and I do like to grab a pot that has like a filter. So that way when my broth is done, I can just pull the top off and the broth is available at the so we're just gonna go ahead and get some of these things in there. And my rule of thumb is basically fill the pot all the way to the top with vegetable matter. However much I can get is perfect. So I fill it with vegetable matter and then I'll add water to meet it. I have some lemongrass in here, some bok choy that looks like I didn't wanna eat it in my salad, but it still wasn't bad. So it'll go right in here to add to the Right. Right, because it depends on what we have and it depends on what's on sale and what's growing. And that's what how we like to do it because that way each broth is special. Yep. Okay, but I definitely like to keep the bases. If I don't have celery, it's some type of herbs or greens. If I don't have carrots, it's gonna be something else that's sweet, like a sweet potato or beets. But I always, 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 always keep that sweet root in there because that gives it a certain flavor that really makes it taste good. And onions. Some people do garlic as well. Right now, I just always stick with the onion. It has that sweetness as well. So that really nice flavor that's going to help build the broth. We don't have to do all the celery. We've got to make sure we have room yeah, for all of the items. And I love putting cabbage fresh cat chopped cabbage on top of my broth Ooh. and some cayenne pepper. It tastes so good. I, I agree. It. The cabbage is not the cat. <laughs> yes, Hannah still likes spice, and so do I. And Mia, fortunately, has never had to deal with cravings of spice. She's completely doesn't need any spice, which I told her is a wonderful thing. You know, not everyone has to work that off of their diet, but as a stimulant for me and Hannah, it's still an issue. So we still use it. It's not very mucus forming. We can warm up our, our bodies that way. Okay, and I happened to find cilantro on sale at the grocery store. They were like, I have a ton of it. They eat it fresh. I'll throw it in broth, um, but I have it. So it's coming in here. Get the little bit of lemon balm. It's more delicious. Oh yeah, lemon balm is great. Um, I'm gonna cut up these onions. I wanna make sure. I wanna cut an onion. You wanna cut an onion, all right. Well, we're outside, so it might not burn. And so this is a really fun process to do with the family. I also am a big ginger fan. You don't have to put ginger if you're not a fan, okay? I also like turmeric. These are the main kind of base seasonings that I use, which is ginger, turmeric, and bay leaves. I just love bay leaves. They have that peppery kind of taste that isn't spicy, but it works. I'm gonna stop there and let you girls finish up with what you're chopping because our pot looks and that's perfect. That's what we wanna do. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, I'll let you girls finish up. Okay, and the last ingredient that we're gonna add, um, we do add water. I don't add it all the way to the top because otherwise we're gonna overflow. I like to keep an eye on how full it gets. Usually this will do. Looks like all of that will fit in there just nicely. We'll get it boiling. If I need to add water a little bit later during the boiling, I'll add it, but I have to see how the vegetables work themselves down. 
I love it. I'll you want to make sure to cook this on a simmer for about an hour. That's what I like to do to get all the flavors into the water. And we'll be back and show you the results. See you later. Yay. Thank you for watching our video. We'll show you the end of the results. Bye. Well, welcome back. We are going to finish up the broth recipe. This has been cooking for an hour. I've let it cool a little bit just so we could do the last steps here together. So I'm gonna take off this lid here, that over there. I'm gonna pull up the drain just to show you a bit of the broth here, what we have after everything's cooked down. I like to push it a little bit to get the extra juice out with kind of like a masher. Um, if I really want to get every last bit of juice, I will run all of this produce through a juicer. But sometimes I'm in a bit of a hurry. I've got children. <laughs> and we're hungry. And they get hungry. So we just kind of press it down. Seems to work Patient. relatively well. Okay. Then I will take this out, put it over here. Then I'm going to pour this into a nice thick glass jar just so we can see it nice. It's very simple. Would you like to explain the way you like to enjoy your broth here? I like it simple, but you can't get the cabbage. Comes out with this beautiful amber color. And Hannah, would you like to share how you put yours together? I like to start by adding some cayenne to mine. I love cayenne. It's so spicy. Then some cabbage. Well, not some, a lot of cabbage. And lemon. I also have a little bit of the spice. Still transitioning off of it. I'm not quite there yet, so I accept where I'm at, <laughs> which is sometimes the hardest thing to do, right? Uh, accept where you are and transition from there. I am a bit of a lemonaholic, so I tend to go heavier on the side of lemon. I go heavier on the side cabbage. of cabbage. Go ahead, you can take it all if you want. I'm having mine plain. Boom. It ain't plain. Have fun. Lemon and Kelly. So this is how each of us enjoys our broth a little differently um, to help aid in our transition. And I'm gonna take a little sip here. Wait, let's all cheers. Okay, let's cheers. Anna. <laughs> she couldn't wait. Cheers. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Wasn't that incredible? Now, if you're a raw foodist, I know you might be saying, what are you doing? Why are you cooking these vegetables? What is this all about? Yes, exactly. And again, I refer you to books like Rational Fasting and Mucus's Diet, Operative Word, Healing System, where it's all about elimination. This isn't about some strict dogmatic adherence to something because it makes sense to you intellectually. This is about practicing a system that gets results and actually works and can do so on the long run. This is a long-term thing. I'm not interested in being real aggressive, eating super super aggressive for the first months or years of practicing this system only to go back and fall off the wagon, go back eating raw liver carcass and you know, just, I don't want to do that. And I don't want you to have to do that. So making broth, something like this vegetable broth, which is very, it's a different tool than juiced vegetables, than green juices. It's a totally different tool. You use both of them, but you got to understand the difference in each, each tool, why one is better than another under certain Certain circumstances now we're talking about the art of the transition and you have to get reference experience you have to study this information you have to do this work and experiment with these different tools to understand which ones are gonna work under what circumstances why you use one over another one and you're gonna learn all of that stuff as you get into this we talk about that a little bit in the training session again I invite you to go down below click the link enroll in my free training you're only gonna be up for a limited time
time, click the link. Do that right now. Be nice to yourself. Don't be super hard on yourself. Don't try to be so aggressive all the time. Don't think that you have to just keep fasting and fasting and fasting and eating perfect and eating perfect uh, until you're fully healed or until you have reached some zenith of, of health. It's That's not what this is about. This is about knowing how to hit the gas, get off the gas, tap the brake. You gotta drive the transition. We're the only ones I know that have this technology. This is immaculate technology, a transitional methodology. This is exceptional. And we're, like I said, we're the only ones that I know of this really is really on board, this really understands this, that outside of the dogma, outside of the, you have to be a certain way, you have to do this, you gotta do it this way. You, no, no cooked food, no, the only type of fasting that you're allowed is long-term water fasting. And you gotta do it under, you know, under these circumstances. It's like, no, there's so many different tools. There's so many different ways where it's such a diversity that it can fit everybody. So there's a way, cause not, not every fasting approach is per is perfect for each person. Not every mucus free period is perfect for each person. Going being 100% mucus free for extended periods of time. So you gotta study this information, practice it, and go down this path. Clean yourself up. Let's let's transform humanity. But start with yourself. You have to, in order to change the world, first you gotta change your diet. That's that's pretty good. That's a pretty good little quote. <laughs> Before you can change the world. You got to change your diet. Hashtag mucus free is the way to be. <laughs> and uh, quote Professor Spira. So I thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, I want you to look right here. This is an excellent video that was made specifically for you. I want you to click right here and I'm going to see you over there. Peace, love and breath.